So what is the number one reason that narcissists withhold intimacy? It's to control you, you guys. It's to keep control of the situation, keep control of you, and have you seeking attention and affection from them, create arguments, create problems. Let's talk about this here today. My name is Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand, recover from, and transform your life after toxic relationships and narcissistic people being in your life. Withholding, all kinds of withholding can happen. Withholding of intimacy is a broad topic, right? It can mean everything from intimacy in the bedroom to intimacy in emotions to giving you information about their life. But specifically, when a narcissist is sexually withholding, it is particularly painful and particularly personal for a lot of people because the majority of people think narcissistic people are after one thing or they're cheating or they are interested in other people. And so it directs the attention back to you, which makes it seem like there's something wrong with you or you're not good enough or there's something about you that that narcissist is not wanting to give to, not wanting to be with. But the truth is the narcissist withholds intimacy and withholds sex and withholds the caring and the sharing because they want control, they want power, and they want to punish you. Narcissistic people, and especially the ones that have a sadistic side, they will use affection and intimacy as a weapon against you. They will weaponize it. They will use it to keep power. In other words, they'll give you little bits of it, like breadcrumbing, maybe, okay? And then they keep you wanting more. And through that, they have control of your emotional well-being. They have control of how you feel about yourself within an intimate relationship, and they have control of the whole situation, all right? Why do they need that control? They need that control to feel good about themselves, to feel powerful, and to support the delusion of grandeur that they have about themselves. They're manipulating you with that tool to keep power in the relationship. So say, let's take a female narcissist and a male survivor. All right, they may withhold intimacy, withhold sex, withhold sharing, whatever it is, closeness, in order to keep you wanting them, in order to dole it out like something they own that they will be giving you if you're good enough. And the thing is, you don't even know what good enough means. You don't know what the playing field is. You're just at the mercy of this toxic person who chooses to give you sex, intimacy, and love when they feel like it. So what you start to notice is when they feel like it is literally just that, when they feel like it, or when they want something, or when they need something, or when they're trying to keep you there or hoover you back. It is a form of devaluation to withhold intimacy. It is so damaging to people's self-esteem, to people's feelings of self-worth, that it is absolutely punishment and it is absolutely something that is used to hurt you. If they can devalue you enough here, think about how little of a reward you need in order to feel okay in the relationship. Basically, it's such a very, it's such a powerful place for a narcissistic person to hold all the cards and have all the control that then in the rest of the relationship, they only have to give you tiny bits of breadcrumbs in order for you to keep seeking more and more from them. They can use it then as a reward, right? For them. If you're giving them the supply that they need exactly as they need it, when they need it, how they need it, then maybe, all right, they can keep it over you as a maybe so that you are always seeking and always trying to please and appease them. They will cause shame for you and cause the feelings of doubt and self-worth plummeting basically to its lowest because of this. If you even ask for intimacy, sex, attention, whatever it is in that way, they can say things to you like you're so needy. Oh my gosh, you always want it. What's wrong with you? You should be shamed. My gosh, you're so something. You're so this, you're, you can write. You, it's an attack on your character once you start asking for it. So while they want to see that you're very interested in them and think they are amazing and super hot and wanting them, 
they also want to use that information to tell you how horrible and shameful you are for having those feelings. So it's like a double control. So the more sadistic narcissists love to do this to watch you suffer. They know it hurts. They know that people want connection and intimacy, closeness, sex, all of that in their life. And they love to watch you suffer. They love to watch you feel bad about yourself and they love to have that power. I think they actually get more from that than they would if they had any intimacy. So another reason that they might be doing this is that they're either cheating or addicted to porn, right? So if all of their attention is going to superficial relationships and not only superficial, but like not even relationships, just the physical act of watching something removed from any connection to another human being, and that is where they get their pleasure, then to be intimate with a person is threatening to them. It feels too close. It feels they have to give. Okay, here's the thing. A narcissist doesn't want to give. They want to take. And in an intimate relationship, when there is true intimacy in sexuality, there is giving on both sides. Well, the narcissist may appear to want to give. What they're really doing is performing. They're performing for themselves in order to watch themselves do all this giving because they think it looks good on them, right? So the true intimacy that's there is never present. Another thing is when you get so close to a narcissist, when they you see that mask slip and the vulnerability of them present, a lot of times they notice that you notice and they shut down and they turn away and they have to block that intimacy with withholding. So what is withholding and what does it look like? Basically, other than the obvious of saying no and turning away from you, either in the bedroom or elsewhere, a refusal to share their deeper emotional space or their even their day or their feelings with you at all. It's a refusal to listen to yours. It's a devaluation and a dismissal of your feelings and your emotions when it comes to the intimacies of your relationship. It's a breadcrumbing you to want from them intimacy and closeness and then a lack of attention and a lack of giving after you express a need or express a desire. It's that they know you want more from life. They know you want more from the relationship. They know you are craving some intimacy, some closeness, whatever it is, okay? And a deliberate refusal to give those things. It's an intentional sabotage around the time when intimacy would take place. So for instance, sabotaging bedtime, sabotaging time when you're alone, sabotaging the time when there's any chance for close connection through gaslighting, projecting, arguing, causing fights, being hostile, shutting down, and then saying, see, we can't get along and turning away from you. Or through knowing that it would be a time when any intimacy would take place and then giving you the silent treatment. I mean, it can go everywhere from a total shutdown and silent treatment to anger, to nagging, to complaining, to whining, to nitpicking, to anything that is totally counterproductive to an intimate connection. And it can also look like a secrecy about their life. Like they just don't tell you anything. They withhold information. They withhold telling you stories or sharing about their day or sharing about their friendships or what they're doing. They hide things. They seem secretive on their phones. They seem secretive with their friends. You don't know what's happening and there is no sharing, which means you're kept on the outside of their intimate life. Okay. And all of these things that happen so painful for people and people tend to believe that there's something they're doing that is causing this, that they, a lot of times a narcissist will be highly sexual and highly intimate seeming in the beginning and then shut it down. I have heard of this happening like the second people get married or the second a baby is born or this, you know, as soon as the relationship shifts into something deeper and more meaningful, that the narcissist will then shut down and this whole withholding cycle will begin. There are some that withhold from the beginning. There are some that withhold, you know, later. It, it really depends on the situation and why they're using this manipulation tool. There are many who use this as a power play for hoovering. So at the end of the relationship, 
then the withholding starts because they're basically in a discard Hoover cycle instead of the love bomb and the devalue cycle. And so they'll withhold and maintain this distance and this emotional distance and this physical distance from you and then pull you in with breadcrumbs or actually giving you moments of intimacy and then slam the door again in order to keep you away. So it's part of the love bomb and devalue, but it's really more like a discard Hoover, even if you're still together. So if you're experiencing this, let me know what you think. You guys hit the thumbs up and the like on this channel. If you are enjoying these videos, let me know what kind of videos you want me to talk about. And I am happy to help you here as you are recovering and understanding and healing from all the toxic people in your life. Also, if you need anything regarding coaching or group coaching or peer support, check out the information in every video. This withholding topic we could go on and on about. If you're experiencing this, let me know what you're going through and let's talk it through and let's make some more videos to help you and help other people recover. Talk to you later and take care. Bye-bye.